Is that it? Are you boiling? Sounds like boiling. Sounds like it's getting ready to boil. Okay. So all these little the, the salad is not the centerpiece, okay, people? So don't don't judge me on my salad making abilities. Honestly, I didn't know what I was signing up for when I got into this recipe. Let's begin. Hey team, how's it going? My name is Estrella Daniela. Welcome back. Happy March. Welcome to Pisces season, the most wonderful, fabulous time of the year. For those of you who are new, welcome. Hi, so nice to meet you. My name is Estrella Daniela and I am an aspiring travel vlogger, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we are. It's a pandemic and I'm stuck in the house. That's all you really need to know. But I am trying to find creative ways of traveling from the safety of my own home. That has mostly meant cooking recipes that I've never made before. For those of you who are coming back, hey, yeah, great. Okay, so today's recipe, just jumping into it, getting straight to it, I anticipate is going to be pretty straightforward and easy. Yay. I am making a Nicaraguan dish from Nicaragua. Nicaragua. It's called carne en bajo. It's not bajo like abajo, it's bao like Vapor, I've learned. But you pronounce it bajo, bajo, I don't know. There's an H there. That's all you really need to know. And then the next tricky thing is, is it V or is it B? It's really hard to say. I'm going to write it with a B. You can see it spelled with a V like bajo. But either way, it's pronounced bajo. There's this like really tricky thing for Spanish speakers between Vs and Bs, like vaca and vaca. Like it's vaca with a V, which is cow, but it's pronounced like vaca. Okay, anyway, that's that tangent. Carne majo, what is it? It is a dish with different vegetables and meat. And honestly, I didn't know what I was signing up for when I got into this recipe. And then I learned that it's a bit more, I don't wanna say intensive. It's not even particularly difficult. It's just not what I anticipated. I thought that you just make all these individual elements and then serve it on a, like a banana leaf. You don't, you take this big old pot, bigger in some cases, and you line it with banana leaves. I'll show you, I'll show you what's going on. Basically you are using vapor and the steam from water that's at the bottom of your pot to cook all your vegetables and all your meat. So it's gonna take like four hours. But once you get it in, it's in. You don't really have to do anything more to it. I'm particularly pumped about this recipe because not only have I never made it before, but I am half Nicaraguan. So it's an ancestral recipe, you could say. My dad is Nicaraguan, my mom is Costa Rican. I am also excited to share more insight of what that means for me. Yeah, let's get started. So actually first, I had to marinate my meat and I marinated it for, it's supposed to be overnight, but I only marinated it for like, so, oh wow, five hours. That's not overnight at all. But I think it should be fine. Okay, this is my meat. I'm using, I believe a pound and a half of skirt. I don't know if you can, can you see it? This is it, this is the meat. So in here with the marinade, I have tomato, onion, lots of garlic, a lot of salt, like an aggressive amount of salt. So I'm not gonna salt anything else. And something called naranja agria, this. So this I think you can get at any market, any grocery store. You know, I can't even, I can't even really tell you what it is. Where are the ingredients? Oh, okay, water, salt. Yeah, concentration of jugo de naranja. Ah, okay. So it's basically just orange juice and limon. Limon can be lemon or limes. It's really confusing. Spanish is a confusing language. Okay, so there's garlic, onion, especia, so different spices, and sugar. Oh man, so like this was my marinade. Whatever, okay, so this is gonna be, this is this. This is, that's in there. I have no idea how much water I'm supposed to be putting at the bottom of my pot, but I'm gonna just put enough so that this little base can sit atop it without water coming through. The other really fun thing is that if you go and look up videos on like how to make this, and even look at recipes for how to make carne bajo, they put twigs in Nicaragua, like from a guayaba tree. It acts as like a, like a base and a protector against the flame, the water, so that no water gets into the 
leaves itself. I don't have a guayaba tree, so this is going to have to do. Before I actually get started on layering everything in, I'm going to prep my vegetables. In this recipe, I need yuca or cassava and green and ripe plantains. I also need a chiltoma, which is just a pepper, and I need tomato. I did not grow up eating carne bajo, I don't think, but I know that my grandmother makes it and she has made it for my mom. So my mom was sharing different like tips and tricks and secrets, none of which I can remember, honestly. Actually, that's a lie. She showed me how to cut the meat. The meat gets cut in like longer strips. Oh, darn it. Chiltoma time. I think I'm gonna cut this like this. I have spent time in Nicaragua. I did not grow up going to Nicaragua or to Costa Rica. Later in life, I did have the opportunity to go and meet family in Costa Rica. I have not met family in Nicaragua. I think I'm gonna cut this into like thirds. So this is my ripe plantain. I have all my vegetables ready. I'm also going to need a head of garlic. So I'm just going to have this ready to go. Now it's time to start layering. Let's begin. For like the most separate fish. So I have my water. I have all of these banana leaves and I am going to start by putting in some banana leaves at the bottom. And then we take longer strips and kind of create a bed at the bottom and bring it up around the sides. Now I get to add my yuca. If you've never had yuca, it's a really starchy root. I think it's a root. Then I'm gonna add in green plantains and my ripe plantains as well. Then it's time to add the meat. And then all of the stuff in the marinade is gonna go in as well. So all of my onions and tomato and all of the liquid as well. Chiltoma. I'm not putting salt to any of this because there was a lot of salt in that marinade. More tomato, that's what we got going on. That is carne bajo. And so now we just kind of cover it with our banana leaves, like a little gift parcel of joy. I'm gonna let it cook until I hear that the water's boiling and then I'm gonna cover it and put it on low so that it can cook for another four hours. It's five o'clock, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> oh my God, nine o'clock, whatever. Okay, so while I wait for this, I will do story time now and talk to you all about my experience in Nicaragua and also my experience growing up as half Nicaraguan. So I went to Nicaragua when I was 20, 21 years old. I studied abroad there for a semester in Managua. I had never wanted to go to Nicaragua. I had actively avoided that part of my cultural identity for most all of my life. Is that it? Are you boiling? Sounds like boiling. Sounds like it's getting ready to boil. I think you're boiling. All right. So. Anyway, I had never really felt particularly connected to my Nicaraguan side. Growing up, my dad never shared positive stories about life in Nicaragua as a child. I think his life was full of, you know, difficulty and hurt. And I grew up with those stories and inherited that pain as well. I had no interest in going to the land that had hurt my dad. And also growing up, I went to a predominantly white, very wealthy private school. Everybody around me, all of my peers, they knew Costa Rica. They'd been to Costa Rica even before I'd ever dreamed of going to Costa Rica. But like Nicaragua, nobody knew what that was or where it was. And it was connected with communism and socialism and revolution and poverty. And so it wasn't like this thing that I would just be like, oh yeah, I'm like half Nicaraguan. And people were like, wow, that's amazing. Like, no. I would get that response when I would say I was half Costa Rican. And they're like, I've been in Costa Rica. I saw a sloth. So I, I kind of just learned to not really talk about my Nicaraguan identity. When I went to college, I was studying Latin American studies and started to like 
learn more about U.S. imperialism and specifically Latin American history back in like the 60s through the 80s and started studying Nicaraguan history and their revolution, the dictatorship that they had. I became very intrigued in the history of my people and wanting to understand more about their revolution, colonization, and mostly just like the ways that these different traumas impact communities and generations. And I'm not gonna talk about that today because I could go on and on and on about intergenerational trauma. I decided to spend a semester in Nicaragua. For the first time, my dad started sharing these stories that were positive, talking about the food and the good childhood memories as I was preparing to leave. I absolutely loved it. I mostly lived in Managua, which is the capital of the country and a place that most tourists avoid. <laughs> I was living with the host family in this small, and I also spent quite a bit of time in Matagalpa, which was my favorite city in Nicaragua. It's kind of in the mountains. It's not as colonial as Granada. I think a lot of tourists gravitate towards Granada because it looks like this colonial city with like the cobblestone streets and like the very brightly painted churches and homes. In terms of food, like Nicaraguan food is food I don't get sick of because it's the food I was raised on. It's like rice, beans, meat, and like a cabbage salad. Unfortunately, I have not been back to Nicaragua since I left. After that experience, I definitely felt a lot more connected to my Nicaraguan side. I was trying to think about what it is I love about Nicaragua. I finally came to it. The country is scrappy in all the best ways. These are people who have experienced colonization, dictatorships, U.S. imperialism, civil war, revolution, police brutality, natural disasters, and they only keep moving forward. They put up a fight for, for what they believe in. Now we're in 41 minutes to go. Okay, so I'm gonna let this continue cooking and go and sit. And I will see you all in 30 and a half hours, maybe? Okay, so it only took two hours and now the bajo is ready. In those two hours, I was just sitting around doing literally nothing and I just now remembered I have to make the cabbage salad, which is like 50% of the meal, honestly. Super, super easy. Essentially, it's really thinly chopped cabbage with tomato and vinegar. And it's like what Nicaraguans are made out of. It's the salad of my childhood. all these little ah, thin slice pieces that you should feel free to just wave around in the air. Can I add like another tomato? This doesn't seem like very much. This is a teeny tiny little container. I don't know what I was thinking. I just want to get this done. I'm going to just add balsamic vinegar and some olive oil. And there's none in there, so that's really productive. Oh, wow. Okay, and then I'm just going to do some of these. The, the salad is not the centerpiece, okay, people? So don't don't judge me on my salad making abilities. This is not where my attention is right now. So someone else can come in and doctor this bad boy up, add more tomato, make this a more Nicaraguan salad experience. Everything's all done. This is my plate. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. That's all there is left to do. Everything's really good. I was nervous about the amount of salt one of the recipes called for for the meat marinade. That flavoring was essential for the rest of the ingredients because now my yuca, I'm amazed it's soft. It's like I can actually cut through it and it has flavor because that marinade and like the juice from the meat was able to just like soak into it and make this a more rich experience than if I were to just like steam a bunch of yuca Mmm, I'm like eating without my family now. Ha! Huh. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, this is actually like really good. I'm impressed. Good job, me. Oh, the heating's on. Darn it. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. I hope that you learned something and if that it has inspired you to one day visit Nicaragua, make your own carne bajo, 
or explore other Nicaraguan recipes. So thank you so much. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Emphasis on the subscribe. And I will see you all around. Bye.